It's time for a little throwback. Go letter style from Kicker. Kicking it old school. Back around 1980, Stillwater Designs developed their first car audio product for pickup trucks, the Kicker, which incorporated two six and a half inch drivers, 10 inch passive, and Paizo mids and tweeters. Just a few years later, they decided to introduce individual drivers. They called them separates. These were available from three and a half inches all the way up to 18 inches. Here in the Audio Magazine, May 1986, to Car Stereo Directory, we can see the listing of these different drivers all the way from six and a half up to 15s and the prices there included. Again, this is a 1986 price and just so you know. And we found some old pictures, thanks to the guys online for sharing these, some of the old vehicles that had these gold letter subs, which were extremely popular from 1986 until the early 1990s. People built big systems using these subs and they were all in the car magazines and the competition circuit. Here's one of their vans they built that had uh, 18s in the back. It also had a lot of linear power amplifiers to 5002s. The setup was done by Ray Rayfield. Very cool. Car Audio and Electronics Magazine, March 1990. They compared a lot of brands, including Stillwater Design C10, and this one came out on top of that test. Now, Kicker recently released a 50th anniversary video. I'm going to link to it in the video description. You really have to check this out. It is super cool. They did an excellent job showing the old school, the history of Kicker, all that good stuff. Now, in commemoration of their 50th anniversary, because Stillwater Design started in 1973, they've released this competition gold series for the year 2023. So very cool. At the time of this video, there were three different models of the gold letter comp subs, 10 inch, 12 inch, and 15. Today, we're going to be focusing on the 12 inch model. Let's take out the one we got here in the box, the 12 inch model. Let's see what it's all about. First thing you'll notice here is they took a lot of effort into making the box look super cool. These are obviously designed for the retail market, even though you can purchase them online through some of the authorized resellers. But yeah, seeing one of these in the store, this will bring back memories to a lot of people. Let's take it out of the box and see what's inside. Here we get the little manual. We get a kicker sticker, get some more information. And then here is the driver. Miss Daisy included, not. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. All right, let's take it out of the package and see. There you can see the gold letter. You can also see the box. Again, 50th anniversary. It's got a lot of information on the box. Now, I know what you guys are going to say right off the bat. The rib surround. I know. I'm going to get back to that later. Overall, just a very clean design with a gold letter on the dust cap. But let's uh, flip the speaker around so we can get a little closer look to the rest of it. It does have a poly cone. And check out the terminals. We really, really dig these terminals. They're gold covered. I don't know if they're gold plated, but they're definitely the push terminals. They're sitting around 8-gauge uh, wire. And then you can see the back also has the old school design, competition gold, looks just like the old one, and uh, has a uniplate extended pole piece, and also has a magnet cover, covering up the magnet to make it look a little nicer. Now something I thought would be cool was bringing out one of the old school kicker subs I have from the late 1980s as a comparison. Now unfortunately this one, um, you know, it survived over the years, but not too well. The speaker no longer works, things like that. But I did want to compare some things. First off, the price. The new sub retails for $219. The old one was $149 back in 1991. But if we adjust that for inflation, that's $310. So those who say the new sub is expensive compared to the old one, not so much. In a recent Kicker Unmasked Live segment, John Myers explained some of the other differences between the two woofers. So roll that beautiful bean footage. If you look at the face of the speakers, I mean, you've got pretty much the same design cone. They actually have the little dimples in the cone, both the new one and the old one. They've got that great Kicker logo in the center. Something you will notice quite a difference if you look at the surround. There is a huge difference in the surrounds in the two speakers. The old series got a little bit smaller surround. It is a treated foam surround. 
But John, what's up with the ribs on these new subs? Can you tell us? Please let us know why. So it's got a Santa Prime rib surround. It's got a lot much taller surround and a much wider surround. So it's got a lot more travel and a lot more power handling. We've actually had some people comment that you know we, they wish we would have kept a little more traditional surround, but you know we want to bring this thing up into the the 21st century. We want to make sure it's it's better than it was before. And we basically taken this speaker and put about 36, 37 years worth of technology into it to make it absolutely an incredible woofer. Now, one of the other differences I noticed right off the bat is the dust cap on the old driver is about four inches. If we check the one here on the new sub, it's around five inches. There's a noticeable difference between the two different drivers. Now, what about the backside? Flipping around, as you can see, the magnet on the new one is definitely much bigger. It's from Kicker Specs. They say it's an 84-ounce dual slug magnet. It is covered up with a the boot there with the nice Kicker logo. Whereas the old one, 38 ounce magnet, does have the bump back plate with the single vent there in the center. The other thing of note here on the old sub, again, you can see the bump back plate as I mentioned already. This one has a two inch voice coil and has these hateful, hateful spade style terminals. Can't say how much I hated these back in the day. Just the uh, wires would always fall off. You really had to solder these on for them to work properly. On the new driver, oh yes, Two and a half inch dual voice coils with these really, really nice spring terminals. They hold your speaker wires perfectly. And that's how we roll these days. So definitely thumbs up on the terminals. These are awesome. Now my old driver here, you can see the spider's a little saggy and the tensile leads are not sewn in at all. So they just kind of flap around. This driver does not have a whole lot of throw. So it's not a big deal for woofers back then. The other thing you may notice is the new driver is quite a bit taller. So as far as the depth goes with the old driver, it's around five and a quarter inches for the mounting depth, whereas the new one is around five and three quarters inches for the mounting depth. Here's a better picture. You can see the difference in that. Again, the new subs gonna have a lot more throw, a lot more output. So it is going to require a little bit more depth. The old driver has this cork surround, which they always fell off. The new one has a rubber slash plastic uh, design, which kind of looks like the old one, but it's not. Now, John mentioned in the Kicker live stream that the 10 inch model is a little bigger than the old one. But as you can see here, the 12s appear to be exactly the same dimension uh, for the diameter. Again, here's a flyover. And we didn't talk much about this extended pole piece and the venting. So I'm going to let John talk about how that works. But if you notice the new Gold Series, the 50th anniversary has got the holes in the back plate for the forced air cooling. That's going to keep this speaker about 20% cool than its predecessor for the same power input. TS specs for the subwoofer geeks out there. Notice the FS difference between the new and the old. Also, the vast, the difference in that. QTS is also high on the new sub. But we're going to try it out in the Gately Audio Acrylic Box. See how it works. This is around a two cubic foot box tuned to about 33 hertz or so. So let's get this wired up. It is dual voice coil, a dual voice coil 4 ohm. So uh, let's get it in the box. Now the one thing to note here is the driver is gonna be turned a little bit because when uh, Bobby made this, he made it so there was a screw at the very top um, of the enclosure. So without me making a ring, adapter ring or whatever, just had to go with what I had here. So again, we did use the IMSG plus to find out what the tuning frequency of the box is. 32.7 is what we determined. Now let's hook it up with some music and an amp to find out do it bump do.
know you guys are probably like, Taylor Swift, what? You got to hear this song that really, really bumps. And this woofer kind of blew me away in this box. It sounded excellent. I know there's a lot of things rattling in the background, but uh, overall sound quality of this sub was very good. Now let's move on to the pros and cons, things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. First off, the good stuff. Retro looks, very cool. Works in ported or sealed enclosures. Great sound quality. Love those terminals. The efficiency with ported box was very good. You can see the power did not require a whole lot of power to get a lot of output. Reasonable price, 219 bucks. I think that's reasonable for this subwoofer. Now things that could be better, the rib surround, is it necessary? According to Kicker, it is. I don't know. It kind of kills the looks. Dual voice call, four ohm sub only. No two ohm dual voice call or single voice call options. Kind of expected. Made in China. Listen, guys, most of the speaker parts and everything they need are made in China. Just easier to do it over there. If this woofer was made in the U.S., it would be around 400 bucks, and people just wouldn't want to spend that much. This is no longer the 90s where everything was made in the U.S. It just is what it is, unfortunately. Now, overall, I really enjoyed the subwoofer. It was sent to me by Kicker, but they did want my honest opinion, and that's what you guys get here. In the Gately box, it was literally perfect sounding. So I can't wait to do some more testing in the vehicle. If you guys want to see anything specific, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you smash the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Love doing this stuff. More fun things coming. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Will the Golds be in limited production? Um, initially, they were going to be, uh, but we decided uh, they're going to be a... a Basically, unless something tragic happens, they're going to be a permanent addition to the line. You know how them sound waves go? I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Through the system, I don't want to be a slave. I've been doing shit my way, or the highway, and in the driveway.